Hi, my name is Frederick Murray. I'm the Instructional Services Librarian here at the Al Harris Library. Uh, I'm a tenured faculty member, uh, 15 years now. Um, welcome to uh, Swazu Libraries. We're going to go inside and do a little tour of the second floor and of the first floor. Uh, and we're going to take a look at our uh, book collection. Um, as freshmen, one of the things that we've been doing, uh, I want to let you know, is for the last year, uh, the library's been undergoing significant renovation on the second floor, uh, in part because General Thomas uh, Stafford, the NASA astronaut, donated his personal archive to your library. Um, again, my name is Frederick Murray. Um, let's go inside and take a look at the second floor. Okay, so we're up on the second floor, and I can tell you it looks markedly different than the uh, previous 15 years that I worked here. They came up here last summer. Um, we were hoping to have everything back in place, but you know, there were a few things that happened. Um, the second floor holds 400,000 books uh, with their shelves. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. But the whole reason that we were redesigning and doing this renovation is, of course, for the new General Thomas Stafford Archive, um, which we can go take a look at right now. Okay, so this is the whole reason we've been doing the second floor renovation is to um, develop and house the uh, Stafford collection. Um, General Stafford, of course, is a NASA astronaut. He did two Gemini missions, six and nine. He did two Apollo missions, 10 and Apollo Soyuz. Um, a few years ago, when this project initiated, General Stafford generously donated his entire his entire collection to the Al Harris Library, which is what jump-started this whole program. Um, and if you think about it, that's an extraordinary thing to do because General Stafford was born in Weatherford, he was a naval uh, test pilot, a Gemini astronaut, Apollo astronaut. Um, his collection of writings, his technical schematics, his engineering books, his personal letters represent a period of American history that doesn't just belong to Oklahoma but belongs to the world. Um, General Stafford easily could have donated his collection to the Smithsonian, um, to the Library of Congress, to any one of the NASA um, museums, um, even to his own museum here in Weatherford. But he wanted to bring it home to the students in Western, Western Oklahoma. Um, Stafford is one of 12 human beings to go to the moon. That's an incredible elite group to be a part of. Uh, as such, his holdings represent a rep repository of scholarship that is going to be mined for generations. Um, one of the things we're doing, in a t as well as housing the physical collection, we've been busy digitizing his collection so that when anybody does a Google search for NASA, Gemini 9, Apollo Soyuz, it's going to bring it right here to your campus. Um, We've got a little schematic of what it's going to look like. I can tell you this looks so much better than it did six months ago when it was just dead plaster. Uh, this general area is going to be open to the public. The glassed-in portion is going to be where the archival work goes on. We're going to temporary, temporarily hire uh, an archivist to come in and help us organize the collection and get it ready. Um, this is a, an incredibly exciting development. We've had a lot of support from the administration and from the alumni uh, associations um, to get this thing done. Uh, when this project started, I can tell you I hated it because it disrupted my library. We had to give up uh, the second floor. Um, we got used to the banging and the clanging uh, that was going on. But now that it's coming to its completion, I, this is going to be a, a remarkable, remarkable site, um, not just for Swazu, but for Western Oklahoma and the state of Oklahoma. Um, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. And you, as freshmen, are going to be part of the first class to have access uh, and be able to appreciate and wor hopefully work with portions of this collection. Hi, we're uh, at an undisclosed location a half mile beneath the city of Weatherford where we're storing the books. No, that's a joke. This is, uh, <laughs> we're not un some underground cavern. We are at a warehouse not far from campus where we've relocated the 400,000 book collection that your library maintains. Um, moving the books here, it took about two weeks. Uh, to getting the shelving set up was a big problem. We hired an offshore company to do that. Hopefully, these books, now I can guarantee these books are going to be migrating back this semester, and that uh, empty second floor that we just saw is going to be filled up and it'll look like a library again.
Now, we are in the digital age, and there's always this question as whether books really have any relevancy. Um, I would argue that yes, they have enormous relevancy as, uh, as, a, as a technology. Um, this is a durable technology. Books in this format have existed for four or five hundred years. These books um, will last with care for about a hundred years. Your library collection is not like your public library collection. Your university library collection is actually a dynamic collection. Every summer, um, every couple of months, the librarians go through their subject specialty, weed out the old books, and put in newer books. So the collection is constantly breathing, um, if you will. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to when we get these things back. Currently, the collection is still open. You have to go through a process to request the books. It takes about a day to get a book. Um, again, as freshmen, you guys won't be responsible for too much of that. Um, but once these books are back in place, it, it, they're here to serve you. The collection is developed around the disciplines and the majors that we offer here. Um, and for a regional library, a collection of 400,000 books is a pretty healthy size. I can tell you that we still do a lot of book traffic. Um, as university, uh, you know, public university students, you also have access to all the other university libraries um, in the state, and that includes OU. We do have an interlibrary loan program. Um, when I teach the classes, I actually I like having students come out into the shelves. For many of you, this may be the biggest book collection you've seen. I know for many of you, um, uh, this may be one of the biggest libraries you've ever seen. When I did graduate work at the University of British Columbia, my library there was 10 floors, and it was one of five libraries. It was like OU. We had a medical school, a law school, a massive collection. Um, the library that you have at your disposal to use to help you uh, in your student success is eminently navigable. Okay, you can use this. Uh, you can use this collection, and we hope that you will. Now, let's go back to the library and take a look at the first floor. Okay, so we're back in the library after having looked at the uh, physical book collection that's going to be migrating back, hopefully uh, towards the ends of this semester, and will be ready to be shelved and put upstairs by the beginning of the spring semester. Um, what can I say about your library? The, the purpose of an academic library is to support the scholarship and learning that goes on here. Uh, as the head of instructional services, uh, I mentioned I do a lot of teaching. This year we're going to be doing most of it online. Um, some of the resources that you have available to you as a student at a regional university, we have 4,500 students, 5,000 students. We, your library has 160 databases. Now, a database is a collection of journals. Each database is subject specific. Each database has anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 journals. Each one of these journals is digitized back 30 or 40 years. It is an enormous amount of information that you have at your fingertips. Now, as freshmen, you're not going to be having to do a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, in, you know, in that regards, uh, in order to find this information uh, on Canvas, it's under student resources. Honestly, the quickest way to get to the Al Harris Library webpage is to Google Swazoo Libraries. Uh, we have two e-book platforms that have, uh, have pretty healthy collections. That's about 300,000 books uh, on those two platforms. If you add that into the 400,000 books we just saw, that's a collection of like 700,000 books. Um, the librarians have spent the summer reconfiguring this space to make it safe and secure for you. Um, we've got plexiglass up front. We're going to ask that you uh, observe social distancing as much as possible. But the last thing we want is that to detract you from the learning that you actually have to do. Um, I have a friend of mine. He's an epidemiologist up in Portland. You can imagine he's a pretty busy guy. He made the observation that this particular generation was born to 9-11 and has come of age in a pandemic. And he thinks that you guys are going to be the greatest generation yet. Uh, I would tend to agree. The fact that you've made the decision to come to university in the fall of 2020 speaks well of what you want to do. It means you are thinking towards the future and thinking towards what you want to do with your lives. I have seen higher education change people's lives, literally. Uh, the number, the percentage of adults in the United States that has a college degree has been hovering at 33%, which is pretty low, I think, which is pretty lame. Here in Oklahoma, it's only 24%.
we are going to need an educated citizenry to get through the problems that are facing us. Your library exists to support your learning. Um, we have a number of services. We have our instruction. We have online reference. You know, the important thing is how do I get help in a library? Um, we have the Ask a Librarian, we have digital chat, we have text chat, you can phone us. Um, uh, by the time fall rolls around, or by the time you guys are seeing this, we should all have Zoom accounts and we'll be able to do Zoom, fa Zoom, uh, Zoom reference consultations. So there's a lot of ways to get help in the library. I'm not alone here. Um, again, my name is Frederick Murray. We have five other librarians. Don't be shy about asking for help. Um, uh, the circulation desk is staffed by other students just like yourselves. If you need some help, my office is right back in that corner. I'm always happy to talk to students. Um, and one more thing, um, while we've been filming this, I have been wearing my mask. Um, that's because there's nobody else in the building right now. Uh, but when you come into the library, you're going to have to mask up. And remember, the mask really is about your community. So welcome to Swazoo. This is a good place to be.